Okay, here's a scenario. Uh, I'm using Google Apps with the domain decorafarmersmarket.com and I currently have just one user, uh, brad.crawford at decorafarmersmarket.com. I kind of want to create a general email address, um, one that isn't tied to a specific person. And so uh, I'm going to go through the steps of how to do that. So to log in, I'm going to go to Gmail and log in with this uh, existing account I have. This is brad.crawford. I'm going to sign in. And now here's the, the new look of Gmail. And the, the place I want to go next, which uh, comes in pretty handy for a number of things, is under this gear here, this gear symbol. It's not the one in the far upright, but the one right below it. And you'll see the second to last item there is manage this domain. So I'm going to click manage this domain. And this is kind of um, the, the administrative interface for uh, Google Apps. So within here, you can see um, you know, all the different apps I'm using. Um, you can see the different users that exist. And this is what we'll come back to. Uh, right now, we just have one user. We're going to create another. Um, but to kind of give you the, the full tour here, um, a group can be handy. A group would be uh, an address that goes to multiple users. So maybe um, you have managers at decorfarmersmarket.com, and when somebody sends an email to managers at decorfarmersmarket.com, it would go to three or four users. Uh, that's what a group is. Domain settings. Um, this is where you can actually... Uh, manage some of the um, things like where my website goes. So if I ever wanted to point this domain not to a Google site, but to another type of website, um, I could actually uh, do this here. I could actually click on this advanced DNS settings under uh, domain, domain settings, domain names, advanced DNS settings. We'll come back to that in a different screencast. But uh, just to give you an idea, that's where that is. Some things on setting up uh, quite a bit of stuff. Actually, a lot of this isn't going to be too useful right now. So, jumping back to organizations and users, I'm going to create a new user. And I know that I want the info at corefarmersmarket.com. I might as well just set a password right now will be me checking it. Just saying it. Weak password, unfortunately, but um, maybe I'll change that. Just for good measure. Now, we're going to create a user. It's not going to let me do that. It, it actually wants a... Oh, I don't like that either. Okay. Uh, it wants a first and a last name, so I can't get by just by doing that. And so what I actually end up doing here, and the best way to do this, from what I can tell, is to actually separate the name something like that. So um, maybe it's Decor Farmers Market Information, where information is the last name, and that way. Um, in, in the email clients I use, that actually comes through as sort of one string. So uh, there's no separation there, which is nice. I, I can see where this could get uh, reversed if your last name, comma, first name, if that was sort of the order. But um, from what I could tell, uh, and from my experience, you know, this really isn't a problem. And if it does get reversed, you know, somebody's still going to figure out who it's from. So it's not the end of the world. I'm going to create that user. Okay, uh, that user is now created. And the next thing I want to do is make that user an admin. To do that, I'm going to click on their name. Oh, I'm going to click the link on their name. I guess that's it. And go to privileges. And check the box. Um, this user is actually going to be a super admin which means they can do everything. You could also assign different things. Um, you know, it's probably not worth uh, looking too carefully at this, but j just know that um, you can assign different 
privileges to different users. Oops, save that. Different apps they can use. And see the different things there. Maybe you add a nickname, maybe um, another hey, Paul, email address that would also reach the same user, maybe information. So then email sent to info at Decor Farmers Market or information at Decor Farmers Market would both get there, get to this person. And uh, when that's done, the last thing I'm going to do, um, just for fun, uh, that may be it. Maybe um, you're ready to go, and now the person can log in as info, or in this case, you, possibly. They're going to have to kind of say, oh, okay, yeah, I got a new account. Yep. Figure out what the code is here. That was an easy one. And one possibility here, and um, maybe you've seen this elsewhere, but you can also set up email forwarding. So maybe you don't want to have to check this, this email address. Uh, this comes in handy for quite a few situations, maybe yours, maybe not. Um, if I go to the gear up here and mail settings. Okay, what's going on? me out there. Try this again. Click the gear, mail settings. Uh, the forwarding tab here where I can add, an, add a forwarding address and I'm just going to have that forward to um, the email address I regu regularly check. Uh, that might not even be in the same domain. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, brad.crawford at gmail.com or something. Uh, but you can set up forwarding. Um, you're actually not quite done yet uh, until uh, you're going to have to go to that. We'll, we'll go through here quick. Uh, you actually have to go get the verif verification code, come back here, or click the link and verify it. And then after that, then you actually have to select that it's enabled. So real quickly here, I'm going to switch accounts. You can see that new um, request to automatically forward mail to this address. I'm going to click the link, or I could copy and paste that code. Click that. Okay. Close this tab. Log back out. Log in as info. One more time. And there, um, back to the forwarding tab.